Hello and welcome to another episode of our Legends of Terror podcast. I'm Conan Sun, and today we're going to do a Path of Champions episode. Two of the best Path players I know, and that's Kekte Mamba and Power Cuties. Let's start with uh, Kekte Mamba. Hello, glad you're here. Hello, it is indeed Kekte Mamba, and... There's two notable things about me, all right? I barely do YouTube, but for some reason it works. And I'm also a proud subscriber of PowerQt's Twitch channel. So, mm-hmm. best emote in, in the business, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, second one is PowerQt's. Oh, thanks very much for having me on. Um, so, I'm, I'm not, I don't consider myself a content creator, but I do play quite a lot of Path of Champions on Twitch. I, I honestly do it mainly just to start a a path community i really like having people there just to chat um and i'm going to start uploading some of my vods on youtube just to help with accessibility because i know not everyone can uh, access twitch all the time um but yeah i'm a path player i don't really touch pvp and i'm excited to talk about some path stuff today yeah so you should first feature some of your most notable achievements power duties you we're the first person to be requ- to be recorded to have one hundred percent on path one point zero. I believe so. Yeah, actually, yeah. I I played a a lot of every version of Lab of Legends <laughs> and Path. Um, I, I think I actually somebody asked me to calculate the hours, and it ended up being like I think eight hundred of Lab and <laughs> uh, about a thousand of Path one, and I'm probably already like at four five hundred on Path two. Crazy. <laughs> And yeah, um, did you um, do you also plan to go for hundred percent on the path two point? Oh, absolutely! Yeah, um, right now I've got a lot of the champions up to three stars, level threes. It's obviously it's it's a little bit difficult uh, with the limitation on the fragments, but that is my goal. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna get uh, three stars, hundred percent on everyone. Okay, yeah, looking forward to that. So for your biggest achievement, Kekti Mamba, I believe it's like beating a Radiant Soul with Jinx. <laughs> yes, that's right. Mm. My, my nightmare of a champion right there. Mm. Mm. So to give you a little bit of a story arc here, um, I, when, when Half Champions, a new update dropped, I posted this on Twitter. Like I've beaten, because Jinx is still OP enough to, and over here, Kekti Mamba, Vote Chinx is OP though, which is correct. But <laughs> then let's move over to your channel where like, you like. He's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, you like tried Arabian Soul with Ilaway and failed. Then eventually comes the I'm sorry, mom, with the Chinx. And <laughs> just resort to Chinx. And look down here, there's a hint comment from someone saying Chinx is OP though. So sweet revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and dirty jinx of users. Oh boy! <laughs> what did you call jinx? I, I put my family to shame. Mm-hmm. Oh, jinx is jinx. Like I don't consider jinx a champion. She's the she's just the tutorial to teach you how to play path. <laughs> she's not a real champion. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, Captain Mamba also a great content creator. I think you were the biggest power champion content creator on YouTube. Five I've seen. Like, who's mainly doing power champions? There's like some random ones playing it once, like. Kepler or something. You're the biggest one doing Ooh. consistently. And, and, yeah, it's just... Well, my biggest question is, what is PvP? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there, There's really only one form of gameplay in Legends of Terra, and that is PV, PvE, right? Like, come <laughs> on. Mm-hmm. I used to do that for expeditions. Group expeditions. Anyways. I was... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Path of Champions also. really. I think I play more Path of Champions of the daily quests and stuff and you don't... that's right come join us all right mm-hmm. the dark side leave the <laughs> pvp world behind thank you moms join the dark side I'm disappointed in you <laughs> <laughs> okay and if you um wonder what we're all doing where you know each other um there is this cool power of champions database that you probably have seen if you're not living under a rock and we are all working on it together. I started the project and then we invited Victor Mamba and Power Cuties and Max Insanity, who was already on a podcast, if you want to check that out. And we are doing a gigantic list. Like I said, most of the basic stuff has been filled out by me, like all the encounters and stuff like that. 
doing the in progress over here where everybody is doing tips and tricks. For example, here you can see all of our relic recommendations. I are not so fleshed out as for example, power cuties, active numbers, scale force. <laughs> I like we just caps lock this. I, I mean, I'm a little bit addicted to Gale Force, so uh, <laughs> it'll be hard. If, if you can, if it's playable by any means, all right, and, and then I will put Gale Force on there. And that being said, also, I am going to attempt to play Gale Force at some point on champions that should not be playing with Gale Force. So just keep that in mind. I want, I want to see the Gale Force Viger. And trust me, it's coming. <laughs> it's, yeah. I will play Gale Force Viger, all right? <laughs> And I will win. I will beat Aso with Gale Force by God. Mark my, mark my words. All right. Okay. It's coming. 2031, at least. Yeah. <laughs> um, just kidding. Uh, Gale Force 1 would be cool. Gale Force and the Corrupted Slug Fragment 1. But yeah, we can be all working on this together, changing tips and tricks. Look at the intro tab over here of our levels. I don't actually play that much. I only have like. Level 314 because I always like collecting stuff and doing funny challenges. Whereas if you get like power cuties, you're at 598 levels. Oh, that's old. I think I'm like at 650 now. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's fine. <laughs> I'm only at 494, so I haven't really got that much. <laughs> uh, yeah, these people definitely play a lot more power champions than me, and I would consider them experts as well. Even if we don't have like every deck list memorized. Not really necessary for power champions. So, um, first of all, let me hear your three favorite champions. Power of champions. Um, Power cuties, I think you should go first. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to say like an old champion and then like a newer champion and then a champion I haven't even played, which makes no sense. But my favorite of the old champions is Garen. Um, just his ability to do the non combat strikes. It just feels so rewarding when you play that smartly. And if you really do understand the the AI algorithms, you can really punish them. Like, I mean, the AI is pretty bad about combat tricks in general, but if you really understand them, you can hit like three for ones. Uh, it's pretty crazy. So I really like Garen and he's, and he's a super strong champion. So that was the first one that I did my uh, ASAL run with and I had a good time. And then for like the more recent ones, Diana is just a powerhouse. Like. <laughs> She's like, how would I say it? She's like a more fair jinx, but that's still not very fair. Uh, there is, there is no fair and jinx in the same uh, I, I'm not so sure about that one, you know? You're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> but like, she's like just the optimal power level where it still feels like I have to think a little bit about what I do. Um, I can't just play cards blindly, but she, she just, you feel very powerful when you're playing her deck. And the other thing I love about her is her deck is so solid. It's probably the only deck that I have trouble cutting cards from. Um, I'm pretty much just cutting the cards I'm picking up along the run. I'm rarely cutting the uh, base cards because her deck is actually really well built. And then my third champion, which makes no sense because I haven't even played him yet. I don't even have him unlocked. Is Tom Kench. But I know <laughs> he's going to be good because I played him a lot in POC1 and he was my favorite in POC1. Um, I watched a little bit of play with Tom. It does seem like they did make him a little bit weaker this time around, which is fair because he was super strong in POC1. Um, but he still seems really strong. Um, he just lets you play like a controlling type of uh, of game, which there's very few champions. Viger is pretty much the only other one that allows you to do uh, control builds. Um, so I'm looking forward to playing some Tom. I love the control builds as well, just different play style, different. I wish you had like a champion that like on the round or game start spawns a bandit tree or something. You can just work mm. for different win conditions. You, you spawn a star spring, Soraka maybe. You know, and I think that that could be a potential that they do in the future. I hope so. I do yeah. hope so. Better than spawning in a spawn sport from game. <laughs> Anyways, um, take the number. What's your favorite? All right. Before I talk about my favorite champions, all right. There is one thing I have to build upon that Power Cutie just talked about. All right, I'm gonna pick three different ones in him. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna spice it up a little bit before well, I even go into that. one's Jinx, right? <laughs> no, no, in fact, but I am gonna talk about her. All right, and the reason why I'm gonna talk about her is because I hate one card in her deck in particular, and I okay. always cut it just off of principle. All right, 
And that card is Amateur Aeronaut. It is terrible. Yes. I never want that in my <laughs> deck. I will cut it no matter what happens. I don't care if I get the sharing is caring. All right. I don't yeah. care. It's gone. All right. I don't want it. It's literally gone. <laughs> get it out of there. Yeah, it is so yes. awkward. Delete that. it. Yes, that's right. Get it out. It doesn't exist. All right. It can't hurt you if it's not there. All right. <laughs> um, no, but my three champions all follow the same rhythm. All right. We don't want to. You know, we don't want to go too far away from the rhythm that Power Cutie set down. But my favorite out of the original 12, all right? So the original 12 that dropped is honestly a Lowey. Um, I know, shocker. Um, <laughs> no, I played, I, I really was able to like level it up very quickly. And I just kind of fell in love with their play style. I love the fact that it's like, you just, you're constantly trying to build up the tentacles. And there is some counterplay to it, but it's like, it's a unique kind of give and take between like, I need to attack, but then I'm, I'm sacking units for the building up my tentacles. And then you just get this huge overwhelming rush whenever you attack with both the Lowy and the tentacles together. It's a super fun build. And there's a lot of different ways you can build around a Lowy, which is where it makes it very fun for me. Right. Or like, and there's no one, like, there's no, like, this is the best relic guaranteed. Right. On, on a Lowy personally for me. And so it's like, I love being able to mess around with different champions and that's one of them that I was like, this is a like a really well designed champ where I think that she is not necessarily the perfect champion, right? Like she's not in, at OP by any means, but uh, she is a very very strong champion, and I think that that warrants the the fun gameplay, right? Because nothing feels worse in this type of mode than playing a very weak champion. Mm -hmm. So I think that Alawi is like a good balance, right? Uh, where you feel very strong with her, um, and then. Out of the newer champions, there's honestly, I probably before the update would have said Leona, but I'm not as much of a fan of the new Leona as the old one. Mm. But I've got to go with a bit of a weaker champion here. All right. And that's Orn. All right. I love Orn. <laughs> he's, he's not good. All right. Like he is not a good champion in comparison to a lot of the other ones, but I love I just him. want to say I love your Orn content, by the yes, way. Those so are my amazing. favorite videos. I <laughs> loved eating that Orn, like the the Ram. That was my favorite thing ever. I, I love the fact that you can do that. It's so stupid that it works, but I love it. All right. I like there was like that. I don't think I'll ever not play Orn with that as like my primary one just because of how fun it is. Like it's just making that video was it's probably one of the highlights of that expansion for me being able to eat orn like eat the ram it's just it's just beautiful all right um and then my third champion so that the one that just came out of the new champions that just came out i obviously remember three of the three of the champions came from the old oh no four actually sorry four champions were from the old path of champions so path of champions 1.0 uh four they were timo tom kench yumi and nar Right. And I think the uh, the champion that probably became a lot weaker out of like from the last version to this version is Nar. I generally think that Nar was uh, or, or Tom Kench. Sorry. Tom Kench was the one that was the most OP. Like that man getting two health every single round permanently was just disgusting. Uh, so they needed to tone it down, which I totally get. But my favorite champion and there, there's only one way to say that the new champion that's my favorite from the, the new the recent one, right? Which is Tactile Mamba is reporting for duty. That's right. He's coming in. He's going, I've got plans for that little guy. All right. That one drop, he's coming in. And I'm gonna I'm going to make some some disgustingly broken mushroom combos with that guy. Um <laughs> You know, like, you I know, honestly feel yeah. Gale Force is built for Teemo, so yeah. that doesn't surprise me at all that Cacti loves Teemo. <laughs> you know, it's just like what what's better than being a fun guy? You know what I mean? <laughs> and so for me, I don't know. I, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with Timo. I love a lot of the new designs though, genuinely. Yeah. Um uh, from the new champions, but I know we'll get into that later. But yeah, Timo's gotta be my favorite one. Uh and they they I'm not gonna lie though, they his his power's just disgustingly broken. I don't know why they gave him <laughs> yeah. ten pup caps at star three every single attack, but they did it. So <laughs> I'm not complaining, but it's just insane how strong they made it. Uh, but there we are. Those are Less the or more than the first. First one, what twice, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. One. Yeah. It it was I believe it was four, and then it was four proc twice. Yeah. yeah, it was four proc twice. Is what they did. So for my favorites, like I played Jinx a lot because it just farm like the right level over and over, and I like being OP. 
My favorite has to be uh, in love just fireworks. Mm. I always play him when I have like best to play 250 cards and I spam these zero cost spells everywhere and it's fun to get triggers and fireworks. Just a blast to play. Highest level champion after. And from the second set, but I, I play a lot of Kane actually. I like his hmm. game plan and I like how broken he is with some powers like he you might have seen the on my Four canes go on the board at the same time, one single cane play. Yeah, I, I like him. Solid choice, basically. Giving you value over time and equipment. Then I, like, good ones, I just unlocked Harris and Timo. Of course, Timo is the last as well. Harris is also kind of fun. I will, so he doesn't do that much yet. I would also go with We'll talk about him again in the future. Great. Yeah, let's just stay on that and let's just discuss all of the new champions from top to bottom. I don't know. That uh, that patch said that Ash was new, so I'm oh, yeah. a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm still waiting on Nora, but you know. Boy, Seraphine. Oh, oh, also, also, no, I can we me. can we talk about real quick the, the real loser here, all right, out of all the new champions? It's the fact that we didn't get Seraphine. Come on. Yeah, I've gotten her as a support. She's really fun. Oh, she's fun as a support, but then it just makes you feel even worse because you're like, you know, yeah, they're not in there yet. You know? yeah. it, they, it's just heartbreaking, really. Yeah. Okay. I think the first one is Na. Just the form guys over here. I could talk some direct damage if Pokey still star powers up a little bit. Actors create a little effect. Twice you create a wall up in hand or one. I'm so annoyed, like this is literally tilting me that the artwork of Wallop is not the artwork of the car of the power that gives you. It's so infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> Can't describe it. Yeah. Um. Has anybody you talked about Na before? Yeah. 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 I think that uh, in terms of Nar for me, right? Uh, first off, I actually, you know, it. I would be with you if it wasn't for the fact that I think that the I forget the. It's like Primal Instinct. I think is the card. It like that art actually look, works so well with the name of the power, which is Beast Within. It works so well with it. that like I'm okay. You know? Ah, like, yeah, I think I think sense. that's okay. But yeah, no, it's. I mean, in terms of Nar, I actually I just played him today for the first time, um, and he is a very fun champion in my mind. But I don't know how well he'll scale. Like as mm -hmm. runs go on, uh, I only played him on like a very like low level run. But I think that his biggest strength is just going to be like, if you can just build up a board to the point where you just have so much impact that whenever you attack, you're just going to one-shot the enemy nexus. I think that's really where Nar is going to shine, uh, which definitely is not the most OP power, but I think it'll be, I think he'll be decent. Yeah, I, I don't have Nar unlocked yet, but I did actually watch some uh, gameplay of Nar. Um, the downfall about his his deck build is it's very oriented towards this transform mechanic, this um, deal damage transform. And I agree with Cacti Mamba that that strategy is going to scale poorly uh, with the uh, later uh, um, uh, adventures because they're just they're not going to give you time to do that. You're not going to get like a, like to transform a teeny dactyl. They're they're not going to give you that opportunity in those later like against an Asol or something like that. So, but Nar himself is a crazy good champion. He's like, if you just build around the Nar itself and kind of ignore everything else, I think Nar will carry. Like, he will just carry with his impact, with his pokey sticks. Um, he's just such a strong champion. But yeah, it's a little, I, I was a little disappointed that they went so heavy into the transform. I would have liked it if they just splashed the transform instead of like really building around the whole archetype. That was actually the first one I. Uploaded half videos with. First one I got to twenty, and 
I really liked like game style compared to like Jinx for example uh, to Vi for example you just get the impact seems weaker unless you have like a full board and then you really kill your opponent in like one or two attacks. I was a big fan of him and I think the craziest one is that they gave Team Ductil. That's cool, yeah. Not that high. You get these eight life each turn and you just play your slow cards. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> That's weird, yeah. But I, don't think I, I will say one thing. The phage on the Tusk Speaker, in my opinion, is one of the best upgrades you can get uh, mm -hmm. in that deck. Uh, Charging Sigil is good too, obviously, but the the phage is really good because, honestly, the, I didn't expect that card to be so good in Nar's deck, but it's a really good turn one play. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just... It it makes it so much easier when you have that board presence and the fact that you're getting a five four with overwhelm and it damages and gets the impact damage for you immediately. It's a very good start to Nars deck, right? Like and that's like a good baseline. So it's really easy to build this condition some powers. One I like the most of now is the explosive uh, entry. Summon an LID one to any I will play bombs. Yeah. Okay, next one we have Yep, you're right there. And he has just the endurance, I think it's called, and as I've damage one, then you get endurance twice plus two. Then when you capture you create a copy of it works on your own unit so you can the guy that kept the the capture copy uh mechanic seems like it's going to be a lot of fun i'm really looking forward to trying to figure out ways to abuse that um like i'm already thinking of plans with like ephemerals and other kind of boosts and stuff like that um yeah no tom tom was my favorite they did nerf his uh his power a little bit for this and i think he's still going to be super strong like he's he's still very very solid just stick a war mogs on him and he's gonna go to town i mean my my first thought right with tom kench is just you just got to imagine like you put berserkers buckle on him too yep. and your star green yeah, every single time definitely. it takes damage yeah. it's just four four <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Dude, every single time it's just crazy like that that's gonna be so much endurance on that man he once he gets on the board he just needs to swallow a couple people then he just starts winning the game as of right then and there, so. Mm -hmm. really like the items. You have the Targon Sprays where you can units with the of the... You have the Crystal Carrier on the Launching Lizard, which just dies after the... You have to keep life to keep life to... Last duration. I like the Crystal. I was going to say, like, I don't know if you... If you would notice, but with the lounging lizard, once he hits star three, that thing never dies unless if it dies to something else because oh. it'll take two damage every round yeah. and it'll get two back. So he yeah. he will consistently have that lounging lizard. And my favorite part, by the way, of his new power, okay, is I actually think even though it's less OP, it's way more synergistic with his deck, which I like because his what two of his early units are both centered around I need to do deal damage to myself to be played mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so what he does is those units immediately deal damage to themselves and then they're either getting plus one or plus two plus two back right depending on what star you have but it's like those those are the types of things that i like to see right because then you can kind of play around that sort of synergistic play style where before it was just like oh this is just overwhelmingly op because it just covers over everything right versus like more of a unique play style Looking forward to this one. Fortunately, technically, built out everything. That much value of going no game plan. Hey, like one. <laughs> Kidding. Okay. And then we have Timo. Like that it was exciting. The fun with Timo is that Timo himself is insane, but the rest of the deck kind of sucked. Don't hate on my man, Pupcat Peddler. All right, mm -hmm. he's 
he's got his purpose, all right, especially with that savage shield. You can't stop this man, all right? He is indeed a savage, and I think that he's one of the stronger cards in that deck because his star two, so the star two for Teemo, right, revolves around any time that your mushrooms proc, right, that you would then get a, a burst speed of the the poison dart, right? Yeah, the poison dart, uh, you get a burst speed of it. So you got to think every single round, if you're proccing those mushrooms, you then get plus six mushrooms guaranteed into the opposing deck, no matter what, just off Pup Cat Peddler alone uh, from that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing I'm playing Timo right now, and I just got him up to uh, the two-star power. Um, it's a really fun deck. The only thing that I kind of don't like about it is it really feels bad when you don't draw Timo. Like, oh, it's, it's almost to the point right? where I'm actually considering, like, running, like, chameleons on him because you really <laughs> yeah. need to draw the Teemo. It feels Where's terrible the... when you don't. I will say one thing I've never understood, all right? Maybe you guys can explain this one to me. I don't understand why you can't cut champions. Like, I would I, love yeah. in some decks to just cut my, my supporting champion just because mm -hmm. of the guaranteed draw for your one champion. Yeah. Like, I... I I get the idea of like you're not like you're supposed to keep the champion you get, but it's like on the event that you don't get that card, it's like the worst feeling in the world. Like this is the same thing with Yasuo, with Annie, those types of champ like decks where like yeah. you don't draw your champion, it feels like you can't do anything. I'm I'm optimistic that that might be like a future legendary level because they do like to do a few interesting things with the legendary levels, and like right now we're capped at thirty, which we're gonna hit like probably within a month or so. So maybe maybe they'll do that in the future. Is they'll let us to cut champions? I don't know. I think the design behind it is literally called Path of Champions, where people just run like I don't know, Lux without a Lux. Good feel pretty bad. Most I can see is cutting out other champions, main champion. Generally, the Legends and Terror is so focused around champions as like barely any cards. But that's not the Path of Champions. Yeah. A lot of effects just don't cut champions and power of champions half off. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, you're right. It has to have the plural in there. I, I didn't think about path yeah. of champion. You know, it just doesn't doesn't have the same ring to it, really. That's true. What happens if you go to a, a champion item chest? In the... I mean... I'd be calling up Riot immediately. You know, <laughs> what's going on? You know, <laughs> the only deck I'd accept that in is a Watcher deck. All right, just give me the Watcher. Just let me summon him turn one, and I'll win the game. This would be Lissandra. <laughs> don't don't even give me Lissandra. There's no landmark support, anyways. All right, like come on, we we feel bad for our girl Talia over here. She's the only girl that has any sort of landmarks, but she has like no help <laughs> landmarks at hey. all. So, <laughs> I did a challenge run once and I managed to beat Galio with a level two, uh, like two star level five Tali. Wow, level five, Jesus. I just like, uh, I was between seasonals and I didn't. Yeah, I went over. The hardest was Zoe. The rest was. I passed Zoe, don't. 30 30. I like Talia. <laughs> but let's maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Things definitely worse. But yeah, let's move on to Vayne, I would say. I picked Vayne and the important decklist. It's kind of just all of her cards. Like, Assassin's Steel is the only old. Do you have her unlocked, uh, Cacti? I do, and I'm glad you asked because I'm about to go into a little bit of a, a little bit of a speech here. All right, so okay. I hope you guys can admire my uh, diplomacy. All right, as I go through this one, but um, you know, Bane, I think Ryan did a phenomenal phenomenal job with. All right, but I also think they made her the most busted thing I've ever seen in my life on in Path of Champions. This champion, unless she somehow falls off super hard later on. She feels like the most broken thing I've ever seen. Like, she, you get three equipments at uh, star three. I don't have her at star three, but even at star two, she feels insanely strong. She is, her tempo is insane. She can get three attacks in a turn without even thinking about it. 
She is just a very strong champion that is going to OTK a lot of runs. And the fact that she's only a four mana champion that can do that is scary. It feels very much like an Alawi, but with this, the free scouts that you get on top of that, it's it's going to be a tough one for a lot of a uh, lot of runs to be able to handle her tempo. Uh, I think she might be the strongest champion of the new patch. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't have her. I've watched a bit of her gameplay. I think t for me, she's like the Diana of this set. Like she's just comes out swinging, pushes tempo really, really hard, and ends matches before the opponent can even do anything. So yeah, can't wait to play her either. I like how they introduced another new item, Dark Blade. First one, actually get what the vampire accepted before another do also battle band. Ah, so each one and the special new like that they oh, diversify. Oh yeah, trust me, I love that one. Mm. Like, like you say, it comes out swinging, playing lane right now in constructed. You get this her when you unlock the pass for first. Of all. I have her unlocked. I like the double time watch. Uh, home in top gen. Also, can I point out something real quick? So first off, I said four mana. She's a three mana champion. Shaming, <laughs> I know. Um, but also her stats it's, as 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 a whole, she's a three four. All right, pretty insane stats for a three mana, in my opinion. Uh, for how good she is, but also. Her Condemn card, by the way, her, her Champ spell mm -hmm. as well, by the way, which gives you the opportunity to run things like the Grand General's Counterplan with things like her as well, is so broken because it is so easy with the, the free scouts you're given on uh, her quick attacks and, or like her like her spell that she always generates for you to get two attacks, right? And so that becomes a one cost, a unit strikes another unit uh, or an, an enemy unit. And she can do that, and then once you get the mana potion, it's a free spell. It's free. You can play the Grand General's Counterplan with that post level nine, which is I think conveniently whenever you get the rare relic for the first time. Um, and you can literally just kill people for free. Like you're like, oh yeah, I got I got two attacks off. Okay, cool. Now you're dead. You know, and you just like this this spell. I think it's gonna get nerfed. <laughs> It's, it feels really strong, but I don't know. Maybe that's just because it's in Path the Champions itself, not in regular play, but because they typically balance off PvP. But it, in Path the Champions, it feels pretty broken, so we'll have to see what happens with it. But Well, I, I, I agree with you fully because um, I have taken her as a support champion. So, like, when you take Vayne support, it, you know, or any support, it's always hard to build around their theme. And, like, I've, you know, I've played MF support so many times. And when you take MF support, you're you're not expecting to ever level her. Like, four swings, yeah. you're probably going to end the game by then. I was leveling Vayne almost every game with, like, nothing but her three cards that she comes with her support kit. Like, it's just crazy. And her level is super strong, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess we could... Well, I'm also a, a bit of a firm believer that in Path of Champions, okay, I think that the strongest champions are the ones that can either do it all or do something like something in particular insanely well. All right. Mm -hmm. I think those are the, the champions that succeed the most. Uh, Jinx is not a do it all champion, but my God, can she kill your Nexus and the fastest possible turn ever which makes her strong right especially with the relic obviously the payloads uh the payloads cannon or whatever it's called uh or the yeah something like that um but so she's got like that one going for her right i think champions that are very versatile include Vayne, and there's something like gwen and we've seen how good gwen is am i right yeah. um so that i think Vayne is going to be up there in terms of how good she is because of how versatile she is so Something like a Bane is where you, you think like, oh my gosh, she's going to synergize well with almost everything. The same thing with Gwen. Like Gwen was, is one of those champions where like she can stay alive, she can do damage, she, she scales well. Like those are the type of things that I look at. And I'm like, all right, these are what makes a champion in Path of Champions good. And so I think she's got the makings of that for like to be a very strong pick no matter what. Kind of like Yumi where you just augment your game plan. Game plan. Mm 
Okay, next someone I finally have unlocked. Paris. Interesting as well. Don't really like Usually when I unlock a champion I have first thing at Nautilus. I actually died to Paris thing. This line map was it's warmed me and I had set that with like one three. I think once you get like a little bit more levels to like find your various more complete. Especially the fast iteration seems like the best card in Varus. Problem is only Varus has an equipment. Want to get another equipment? Hey, Varus. Card, but get one. Horse and other equipment. So Varus is uh is easy. I actually have played through his campaign. I haven't done the Ace All run yet, but uh, I've done the rest of his campaign. He so I didn't like him at first. Um the one star Varus really feels very similar to just a lot of other champions. It didn't really feel special at all. Um it was kind of boring. And then once you hit his two star, that ability to get a uh reduce a, a spell in your deck by one mana and then get a copy of your hand. You can do such crazy things with this. So the first thing you do is you basically cut most of his spells that he naturally comes with, except for the 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 one drop one. That one that one is actually quite useful. And then you just load up with just like some ridiculous spells, like just ridiculous spells, just like things like golden ages, <laughs> things like oh yeah, it it you can do oh, such boy. silly things with Varus. It's crazy. Like you, and and if you have enough copies, it will just keep reducing the same card over and over again. So you're literally getting like zero cost Aegis. Like you're basically a Lux deck, but you actually have aggro creatures for once. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, a... you're not just waiting for Fort Amasia? What do you mean? You're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he gets really fun at two stars. I, uh, but yeah, he, he's a little rough before that, I would say. I actually have not played Varus yet. I haven't had the luxury of it. However, I will say that I do think that two things. First off, uh, I think that his his concept is very interesting in comparison to what I've seen from some other ones. The fact that like you're building up his power, but then it like goes away afterwards. I think that's going to be very interesting with the the one power that allows you to keep the buffs uh, on his at different units. That one's going to be interesting. Not sure um, if it actually for... works by the way. Yeah, I think it's actually active. And then, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's a good point. And then the other thing I think that is just like I feel like every single person that mains Varus, once they hit star three, they're just gonna be begging to get Tarek. Every single <laughs> run that they do, they're gonna be like, "Please, just give me a Tarek, baby, and I'll win this whole thing." Because this, the fact that you just double and like you copy every single single target spell that you play onto your strongest ally in that one mana drop all right that that one drop that it just destroys everything momentous choice getting that thing for four procs mm -hmm. is insane that's it, just insane like there's no shot that they're gonna like i don't know they might nerf that card i, I know that card might get nerfed for sure but that'll be a very strong power for for Varus, especially because getting four procs of that is a very powerful effect and that can almost win you a game on its own, and it's a burst speed one mana card. So, yeah, the uh, that 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 two star power is so versatile with a lot of supports. I I don't think it's just Tarek. I think it's a lot. Like even like I had a run with Pantheon, and it's just like these faded units just go berserk, like berserk. It's crazy. Um, there's so many like neat supports you can play with Ferris with his spell copies. Yeah, like, Mentis Choice is, like, the most underrated card. Uh, I gave it, like, a 5 out of 3. Yeah, this is, like, the first one. It has so many combos, so much stuff you could do. I'm not... Yeah, hey, looking forward to playing him tomorrow position. against... Yeah, then we have just... Umi. Yumi was the second one I got to do. First, she passed off again. Makes me kind of sad about her is that the first didn't give her that many. 
keywords. That's like a great club. A great club on like a Google or on the Rainbow Fish. Like the original one where you can high roll more, like with random powers, which is like Scout and. I, I like the uh, uh, about the deck. I think it's okay, but not that. Was one well, then you get. You play. I. I was just gonna say that I actually love Yui's uh, Star Two Power. I think that is the best uh, fix that they made to that deck in comparison to Path Champions One. Because mm -hmm. I played Path Champions One. And I was not a fan of Yumi because it felt like she was so slow and that you had to get yeah. another unit out before Yumi to play around new unit. Yeah. Whereas this, the the fact that you can get two Koros out on the board that have faded, by the way. Faded, and then if you're star three, they get a plus two, plus two for every faded proc you get. Already feels great. But then the fact that you, it means that then you can play a Yumi or something like that without feeling the added pressure of like, Oh man, if I play Yumi, then I'm just playing her as is, right? Not like onto a champion. That that sort of feeling is great, and I think that that is going to make Yumi feel a lot better to play. Uh, I haven't played her yet, but I was very happy to see that change as somebody who played Yumi previously in the uh, the last of Hat Champions and wasn't as fond of her because of that reason. So, yeah, I I'm agreeing with you 100. percent I haven't played Yumi yet either, but in Path One. You were rolling hard for those uh, powers that create the uh, units at the start of the game, um, so they just gave it to gave it to you for free. That's amazing. <laughs> like they they really did fix the issue with her. That that was really smart. Um, I like faded. I think that's a really fun play style for Path of Champions. The one thing that I thought was a little weird was the timing of the Yumi release. The reason why I say that is because the the patch before this, we got a whole bunch of equipment champions. This patch, we got quite a few equipment champions and like you know the, the joke is attach is just bad equip so it's kind of weird that they gave us the attached champion like while we're getting all these equipment champions i thought that they probably would spread them apart a little bit or something but i mean i like faded so i think i am going to enjoy this uh this yumi deck once i start playing her i had like one of the most because this is actually not once per turn target your eyes you managed to reach the quick will to zero, you have two quick wills, you basically keep swapping the round on this and just buffing it up. But one unit to like 700, 700, and because this is not once per turn, target a faded ally, but it doesn't have to actually get zero because it's basically really, really big unit. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Also, I've heard from a viewer of mine, all right, they put it in a comment of my video. I cannot verify the integrity of this, but it is going to be something I try whenever I do get the attempt to, which is that apparently Yumi, okay, Yumi can genuinely play Gale Force, and if she attaches onto a champion, okay, she will give them the scout keyword and she will not get recalled. That is that actually does heard. make sense. And if that is the case, Gale Force is just a, it's just giving me more reasons to love that relic. All right, I I'm gonna be addicted to that thing for the rest of Path <laughs> Champions 2.0. I swear I've gotten that I've gotten that relic and I probably will never stop using it. It is insanely it, it's insane to me how crazy the combos are with some of these champions. And like they just like they don't even recall Yumi either. They're like, yeah, bro, you can just get the scout keyword for free. So I think that that's going to lead to a lot of really strong combos for her as well. All of these items that work with you, like play doesn't start your tech. And, uh, and the curse symbol. Work. That's really good. Plus two. I'll get some blood, but I can just mark kind of. Here's like I just game 718. 
Just <laughs> looped all the failed units over. <laughs> it's just Jeez. units are like 500, 500. Uh, like a meme screenshot, like, like everybody at 420 that keep messing up a little. Oh country. my god, trolling the AI. <laughs> no shame. Yeah, I like <laughs> something that's just chilling in the Champions match, like with A Soul and pay out all of my cards over and over until I've. It's an AI, it doesn't bind. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that covers the new champions. Yeah, good. Where is the new? Uh, what you mean from POC one? Yeah, from yeah. one, right? Uh, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but we're missing quite a few. Yeah, we're, we're missing Pike, which is a sad point right. for me. Um. We're missing Pike. I want to see Pantheon come at some point. Uh, I know it's Shocker. Literally my YouTube uh, <laughs> picture, but um, you know, uh, we're, we're missing Pike. We're missing uh, there was... Wasn't uh, Shivana and Swain, or were they just um, La original Love of Legends? I, okay. Yeah, I think those were original ones. They, okay. I met the... Uh, who are you missing? I never know who I'm... Oh, Nami was one. Nami was one of them. Uh, she was in the previous version, and then they just needed her. No. Yeah, no, we're missing we're missing a few though for sure. Um, oh, yeah, my boy was... Lucian hasn't seen the light since Lab of Legends. Um, yeah, yeah. And he was fun too. Yeah, I I miss that man. Wrapped <laughs> in Thresh's lantern, but the Thresh is. <laughs> <laughs> He got trapped. And actually, Hecarim was always one of my favorite champs to play, too. Oh, yeah, like the 5-5 five, five yeah. lifesteal. Yeah. Aphelios, as well, was one of mine uh, that I used to enjoy back in Live of Legends, but... Just to do, like, not to little... Yo, if they bring deep to Path of Champions, that'd be pretty cool. Um... Yeah, I don't know. It would it'd be awkward, but I mean, yeah, it it could be abusable for sure. I was just gonna say, just... like Darius, they they have like thirty seven percent of your like, total. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why don't they just add all the champions that already exist to Path Champions right now? You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's it wouldn't be that much of an undertaking, am I right? You I... know, not. Yeah, I no mean, big either deal. Uh, either a lot of people are going to be out of fragments, or <laughs> Riot's going to make a lot of money. It's one or the other. Or <laughs> well, I hope that they're making good money for me already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and for uh, what's the final topic? Today? We have to cover the new final boss of Jim. It's going to be the final boss. I just bought like five thousand. That's already in Seoul, and this map works that Riot gets the legendary powers, one of F, and it can't hit the game. And then you get Boss Rush, where they change Sun Champions that work there. Then legendary climb, and the foe summon the double its stats. It was have already in Seoul, they have collected the deck. Out of your I don't know how you did that. <laughs> I uploaded the video, so watch okay, it. I need to watch that. <laughs> it's like I just it was the first try on my on my tablet. I thought it would take it with part wow. like seven. Sitting there and killing Jeez. it over and but yeah, what are your first impressions? The most so, uh, ones is like full affliction cost two, so double silence for two mana. Mind split. And of course, with the power level champion, you will just summon the A soul, which will be really, really big, basically. As this song. Go ahead now. I I really like just the overall design of the whole map of the uh boss rush. Um 
I, I like it's it's always frustrating because you always want it to be perfect and it's it's not perfect. There's a few things that I wish they would have changed a little bit, but all in all, it's super challenging. It really does like push your skills, um, and it does feel rewarding. Like when you beat Ace All, it actually does like. Um, I may be touching a nerve uh, with Cacti Mamba here, though. But <laughs> <laughs> when you actually the Ace Dang. All, it feels really good. <laughs> No, I, uh, yeah, he's, I think the only lack, the, the feeling of that I think is most lackluster is for how challenging he is in comparison to the three and a half star Galio, right? I think he's a significant step up in a lot of ways. He feels very underwhelming in terms of total XP that you get from the mm -hmm. run, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is something that maybe they can revisit in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, but in a lot of ways, I really like the run. Um, it's very unique. It's it's definitely. I was in my mind. I was thinking about you know like I was racking around in, with like ways that they could make another champion that was tougher than uh than Galio because it, I thought they did a phenomenal job with the Galio run overall, and the fact that they start you off with a boss fight, and not just a boss fight, but like literally like its own straight up like yeah we're, we're making this like a big boss encounter and that's your first encounter you know like so they really try to make it tough and the fact the shock on my face whenever i went in and saw that there was no heal before a soul it broke my heart all right like that the fact that they did that is cruel all right like that is where i you know i i shed a tear in that moment uh, but <laughs> You know, I think they did a really good job with a soul, and it makes me really curious what they might do for Freljord, because they have two more months to work on the Freljord, because I'm assuming that's what they'll drop next. Um, I really hope it's at least a three and a half star from the Freljord. We'll see what they drop, but I think that they did a really good job with this run in particular. I mean, just everything being legendary, I think that this is probably as tough of a run as you can make with what they have right now. I remember when I made this deck list, I was so sad that some people will just never block the final boss fights with Darius, special power over here, for example. Such power. If you don't play like Jinx 2 star, you can't get him. And Jinx 2 star is kind of a joke. More interesting to fight with other champions. Now you can actually fight all of these cool bosses you have in the adventure. Ezreal, two star, and watching of these are all now available in the app, and you can fight them. Uh, you feel like playing, and really, really awesome, really good use of your resources because you can't just easily sign 50 new champions, new encounters, make hard ones, and test it for all of the different guys. You know, they don't have that many people allocated to our champions right now, so. They make really, really good news with the, what they have with the adventures, with the Radiant Soul boss fight. Over to Reliot. You already have the map in the game, as far as I know. Data files. Edge. Maybe with Bennett. I hope that they still yeah. put out some. I'm hoping that they're going to do some unique fights for that because i do feel like for the shadow isles and for the kaisa shirima they reused basically all the fights so hopefully we get some uh, something new with the frail yard they made this list for basically all of the encounters i rolled through like bilge water i have like infinite amounts of fights in bilge water get this infinite amounts of fights in the mars here and yeah. then done to all I only have like 20 or 30 or something fights. And when you go way down. There literally are yeah, only four different Shadow Eyes fights. Styling, yeah. Elder Shades Doctor, Mr. Rave, Camera, and Yeah. Like they, 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 like, two different they used maps. so many of them three times there, yeah. They're like trying to mix it up a little bit, but the decklist are different, the powers are a little bit different. Add and for Rima, it's basically this. Well, it's Hagum, we also have to. 
one of the uh, I I do agree with you guys a lot on the fact that they that I would love to see some new encounters. Uh, those are definitely a big like stopping point for me in terms of like yeah, but we've already seen all these. It it, it makes it so that like only the bosses really feel unique in terms of the different runs. But yeah. the one thing that I I I don't know about you guys, but I feel I've been very very impressed since. I've seen the new maps that these been they've been dropping like constantly like the Shuriman map absolutely wonderful the Shadow Isles map except for like one bug where like the the like one piece of rock is in front of you and so you can't actually see what the encounter is um but other than that like the Shadow Isles one's beautiful and that Targon map is beautiful the, yeah, the one the that they Targon just map is so good yeah. they did such a good job with all of these maps and it genuinely i'm still in love with the demacia one by the way like that mm. one looks amazing like they they really killed it i think at some point they're gonna have to go back and change the piltover and zon and ionian and bilgewater ones just so that they can match how good the Noxus and demacian and the rest of them look but um they look absolutely fantastic and the like you're, you're pulling up the mountains here but the mountains aren't even the best part it's once you get to the peak and you can see that like all the constellations and things like that that you're kind of highlighting right now it is fantastic i am constantly impressed with the amount of stuff that they do with a very clearly small team um that's why i'm not very surprised that they haven't continued the campaigns they were continuing the campaigns at first because they were they had a bigger team so they, they thought that they could continue to do things like that whereas with the smaller team they've actually done a lot and in a lot of ways to co to compensate for the fact that they don't have the individual campaigns anymore they've done a really good job of actually they've been dropping more champions uh i don't think that a lot of people have recognized the fact that they dropped eight champions and then in a month turn around they dropped six like that is insane they dropped 14 new champions in the span of like two months and and I honestly think that they balance their decks and their powers really well, like for that quick turnaround too. So easy to make them broke. Really you have to yeah. test this. And yeah. just a champion at five cards or cards and power and for a day. The amount of testing that goes into the I kinda like it that they focus more on like bigger projects instead of the uh, like fights because the two star fights are like nice but on the other hand you don't really have a lot of replay once you're three star all of the two star fights are kind of broke uh, because like, I think I really felt like replaying those I'm back as three star adventures and I think the thing that's given me a lot of hope for uh, the path of champions is now it it kind of started to fill out all of the lower, like, and I say lower in the sense of, like, all the lower star adventures. Like, they've kind of filled out, like, the, the volume that they need to feel like, okay, I've got enough of a dif difference of opinion that I can, or a difference of choice that I can kind of, like, pick from, which I think, like, I need to be in a three-star run, but I think that Orin will do better into Kaisa than Thresh, right? Like, you have all that stuff that I think that now it's like, okay, so you recognize that you have all that stuff. So then what do you need to do, right? You need to go vertical in the sense that now you have to scale things up to where you're constantly giving players tougher and tougher challenges. And that's what's going to make players want to keep coming back. And it actually gives players that are already three-star or a level 30 kind of people that have something to work for with their champion, right? Where they're like, okay, well, I have to beat them with this. And I think that they need to just keep doing that. I, I think that their, their cadence of one adventure a patch is completely fine in terms of the path of champions expansion as long as they keep making tough adventures right um i think that's what's going to keep the longevity of the mode and then that also will push them forward at some point into making a couple changes that i know we'll talk about in a, or at least i'll mention in a second uh whenever we move topics here but i think that that's kind of what i'm looking forward to is just they, they I kind of made that the cadence is like one one you know adventure like new adventure uh every single patch and i'm excited to see what they do after dropping a four star so like, I, I think we don't really need that many four stars because not that many people are uh, a lot of people play champions a lot but you can see even between us like i wrote this whole space and 
half the roster at here and our guys at 20 plus, zero at 30. I think the average player base has like one or two at 20 plus, 20 plus, three plus. I don't think many people have a bunch of slackers. <laughs> I think part of the reason I actually You're do just think crazy part of the reason for this. <laughs> yeah. Of course I'm I'm a slacker for sure. I don't <laughs> grind as much as I should, but no, I think part of the reason for that is because they, they genuinely don't have like a ton of like free XP that they give out, right? Like they really make you work for that XP. And so I can see where like a lot of people they want to play the new thing and they don't necessarily want to like grind out on a champion, which is fine. But that's where it's like, I think that that's okay. Like, I think it's okay that you don't reach level 30 necessarily. Um, I think that the one downside to holding back, though, on the the, the last relic slot being a rare until level 30 is it does yeah. kind of feel like you're pushed to completely level up a champion if you want to go for, like, a cool combo like that. But I totally understand why they gatekeep that because... Level 30, or like, because whenever you have three rare relics that you can put on your champion, that's disgusting. Like, you, there's so many things you can do with three rare relics. It's, there's so many opportunities, and it's very hard to not find anything to, to work with your champion, right? Like, you can make your champions very strong with three. I kind of purposely don't level them up because I find level 30 champions. And yeah, like, you're not like wrong. Some, Honestly, lower, like, like once once I hit level twenty five, it 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 does get pretty boring, and it's basically I just have like the only challenge I can do is like I'm gonna try to speed run it now because <laughs> it really is so easy. It, you're not wrong, and that leads me to the next point to our wishes, hopes for audience, all expectations that maybe right that listens listens to podcasts and what is it wanting. I've said it for like three now. Say it again. Please give us like a drop down box to select our star level, our champion level, and our legend level for our fight. Let me do my one, legend level one, star one, level one, a soul challenge. Give people like our cuties a way to replay Bard at level 10. Yeah. To count or something. I think that's the biggest. It's really easy, really easy to implement. How hard it is to implement. Any settings according to it. it has to be lower than just a whole new map. Having this option would promote so much replay. And I would play it a lot more if I could. Going back to these one star adventures with actual one star characters instead of fish and keep saying it until we have. Make it like I legend level 30 and change your legend levels. Maybe have your new gently changing down. And... Okay. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but my biggest wish actually is, and I, I said this very long ago on my Twitter account, all right, very long ago, and I've said it in videos, and I still to this day believe it is the most necessary change to feel way worse. It, there's, there's two big changes I need to see. One of them is for players who've been playing for a while right and then one is for players that are new okay because the biggest issue i see with new players coming into this mode is how hard it's going to be for them with how you know like with how big the pool is imagine how tough it is to get enough fragments for a champion to just unlock the champion let alone to start them up right like we we've all been playing since the release of path of champions which makes it a lot easier to Oh, as new champions are coming in, we kind of star them up, right? Um, that's like number one is I think that they need to do something similar to the way that they do the region maps, where they like allow you to like select something and then you can kind of get like XP through that way. I think they should allow you to select a champion and then just have them level up that way. I think they can still do it at the same pace, right? But by getting that consistent fragments towards one champion would actually help a lot more with with people feeling a little bit less worse in terms of and heck you could even actually slow it down if you wanted to but it, but as long as people feel like they're allowed to like pick where they want to be able to like give their like star uh fragments towards right i think it's gonna be a little bit easier for players that are incoming 
to be able to do something like that. And I think the other thing that is going to be very, very important uh, for people long term is we need a way to I, I believe the best way to do this is to get to just make it so that there is a relic price for wild with wild fragments that you can spend on relics okay i don't think that you need to get rid of our relic system as is i think that the relic system as is it's perfectly fine uh with the randomization but to make it not just completely like random whether or not you're getting good relics or not right because i've gotten six jar and fist unlocked so far okay and you can only get a max of three so it's like i i've only got i've gotten six fragments for the other three silver reliquaries that gave me those uh i think that there should be a way for you to purchase these relics even if they're insanely expensive right so like maybe you only get two in terms of rare relics back you get two fragments but it costs like four or six to get a rare one right but like i think that that would be like my biggest changes um as you know like i keep talking so maybe one of you guys should stop me here but those are my two biggest changes in terms of you know i think we need to have for new new players and things like that i think there needs to be more accessible way to unlock champions and then i think for older players, I think the because like for me, my dream would be to be able to see relics. It just like grab relics as is because that's like I would spend so many fragments on making sure I had all the relics because my God, the content I could make off those relics. Like mm -hmm. I like I feel so gatekept on making some videos because I just can't get relics. I hate you guys because you guys just literally stole all my talking points. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's literally what I was about to say. So yeah. my big, my biggest wish is the accessibility for relics and fragments. Um, I actually, so I, I fully agree with what Cacti Mamba said. Is I wish there was a relic shop, like just in the in the main menu, relic shop. You can purchase what you want for X fragments, and you get to play with what you want. And then the accessibility for the champions, you guys already mentioned it. Like they're releasing champions really quickly now. There's just no way to keep up with in-game currency. Uh, you have to purchase champions if you want to have every uh, a champion unlocked. And I don't like the fact that uh, when you buy a champion, it, you, you're only buying the level zero. Like I think, I think if you're gonna if you're paying real money for it, they should give you the one star because the one star is when you actually feel like the uniqueness of that champion in Path of Champions. So I feel like they probably should have just they probably should just let you be one star once you buy the champion. It would only um, be ten more fragments too, really. When you think yeah. about it. And then and then Conanson mentioned the customization, fully agree. There really isn't very much re replayability once you hit thirty. Once you hit thirty, they should just let you pick pick your level, pick your champion star level, um, really let you customize how you want to play your run. Um, there is one other wish that I do have, and that is, I, I don't think this is going to happen, but uh, I can always wish, and that is they need to stop equating tempo with difficulty. And that's that's my main caveat with the ASOL run. Like, I love the ASOL run. It's just because it's so, um, everything in this, in this mode is just tempo oriented. Um, it does mean that like for the ASOL run, there are some champions that are, I, I'd like, it's gonna be a nightmare to do. Like, for example, like a slower champion like Vigor, or maybe even Orn, it's gonna be a nightmare because they just equate higher difficulty with higher tempo all the time. And that doesn't really translate well for some specific champions. And, and that kind of feels bad. I'm hoping that in the future, they're going to start making um, other difficult runs um, that are completely not tempo oriented. For example, Conan mentioned, like, what about like a Star Spring map where you just start with Star Spring and they have infinite life and you have to heal to win the run or something like that. Like, there's just a lot of different ways that they could do it that they haven't really explored yet. The closest thing that I would say is that final boss of Iger from um, the previous um, uh, event. Um, that was that was a little that was that one was really fun. I hope they do more stuff like that. Yeah, I the one disappointing thing for the final boss big R for me, which I totally understood why they did it. It didn't feel as much of a challenge for me with some of the champions, and that's obviously because they they want it to be accessible to all players that are playing the mode, right? Uh, but I, I agree with you in the sense that we really need, you both of you really, we, we really need a, a way to kind of move away from this. If you don't get a good play in like two turns, you're dead, right? Like that, that yeah. doesn't necessarily always feel good. I think there should be some runs like that, 
Yep. And I think yep. there should be some encounters like that. Yep. However, it shouldn't feel like that's all it is. And I, I'm okay with ramp style games, but I think that there should be more of like the, like, I think a perfect example of how this was done was with Karma, right? I think yep. Karma was a very well designed boss. She was annoying as, as all heck, all right? Like, she is a terribly annoying champion if you cannot kill her immediately. But the fact that not only does she get 10 mana gems, but so do you, means that, like, man, they go off at a really strong start because obviously they're enlightened, right? That That's part of their deck. However, it doesn't feel like it's unplayable, right? Like, you also get 10 mana. So if you have a really expensive card in your deck, you're allowed to play that card immediately, right? And things like that. And so I think that that's where they really missed out on something like that. It's something that they should be looking more in the future because they do have to consider the fact that there are champions where it's like they do have a slower play style and, like, it kind of feels like at this point where you're like, do you want us to be forced if you're a slower champion to run like Star Child Staff every round, right? Because like you just have to heal because you're constantly taking damage or, you know, and things like that. Because then, you know, I do think that health is obviously like one of the most important resources in Path of Champions. So it's just where I'm like, I keep looking. I'm like, there's almost no champion in this entire, in all of them that can really regenerate health, which is where I, I just keep thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, there's going to become a point where at certain runs, Wen is going to become the most OP champion and path champion because of the fact that she can drain her entire life bar back every single attack. Like, I just, I keep thinking about it. I'm like, that's just going to be the, the future. It's just going to be how high can you keep your health bar, right? Yeah. Um, if it becomes so tempo-based. And that's where I do get a little worried for the mode because of, like, there are different champions that have some sort of healing in their deck, right, that's given to them. And those champions will scale much, much better into those types of tempo runs than a champion like Orn or a champion like Vigar, which Vigar is literally reliant on how many turns it goes. Like, he is reliant on waiting turns to exactly. get his darkness up, right? He, and he is forced. That is literally his entire playstyle. Yep. And there are giving them that sort of playstyle, and then they're literally just slapping him in the face with it and it's just that's going to be a big limiter and then the other thing i did want to mention real quick and i hey, before you go to the other kinda... thing i want to do something because <laughs> i think this is a really interesting point to um because me and power cute this had this argument on reddit and stuff how important is healing i kept saying that yeah. Helios is best champion because it just everybody can heal up to full in every fight OP. Have infinite life. How yeah. you and my counter argument is you just build your deck faster so that you don't take the damage in the first <laughs> place. If you can mitigate the damage, you don't need to heal. And that feels bad, honestly. Like I don't want to have to build a deck like that, that I have to actually go so fast that I'm not taking damage. I would rather be able to, you know, take a little damage, play, you know, conservatively, make proper trades, and then heal back. But there are some runs where they just don't allow you to do that. It's it's possible to fill out everything in the game. You have a good strategy for that. But it's really hard. Like you have to have the worst one for that is Crash. Crash, but the ancient ladies fight. One was one of the hardest time to mill out. This one, but the other version, the thieves tools. You keep shuffling it back and they keep growing and you kind of eventually you get outvalued and they run out of cards in the deck. I'm surprised, surprised you decked them out in 40 rounds, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, um, this is one you just... This is actually <laughs> easier than the other one because the, the shadies you nap will... Mm. You have to hope that they don't... They always have to stop through the, through the complicated. Yeah, and I don't like. I find it good that there are no auto lose, like fights, just lose after seven turns or so. Hudson, for example, if you play the Spire has like the guy that just blows up after seven turns. I really enjoy those that much. I and Head just hitting you for more and more and more. Like a little bit better, but I can see what you mean in tempo oriented style. I think that's a problem of flat error in general. If you decide it's always focused around tempo, uh, how the game is behind 25. 
how quickly you are right. like that that is ultimately kind of how the 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 underlying game is designed you are right about that yeah i think the uh Okay, well, I was just going to say that I think the other thing that I was looking at in terms of what would be kind of cool future stuff, because I think that they've kind of established, in my opinion, the cadence of how they want to make patches, right? Which is they're going to do big patch, small patch, big patch, small patch, right? It's kind of like the kind of the cadence that they want to keep, which I'm all in favor for. Um, one of the things I'd like to see from one of their big patches in the future, right? The, the last big patch that they had was the greatest patch I've ever seen in my life in a long time for them which was the inclusion of weekly adventures. That idea was just, they nailed it. They nailed it so well. Um, it, they did such a good job. It gives players that are uh, like, you know, that are looking for something to do way more things to do. And it gives you a consistent way to gain relics every single week. It is such a good design. They nailed that one. It's just like my hat's off to them on that. I think another big thing that I'd like to see that I think would be very similar to that in terms of what would be kind of interesting in the future is I think there's no secret in the sense that one of the most fun things about Path of Champions is coming up with cool new ideas and then trying them, right? And one of the most consistent ways to do that is with Relics. And I think that the, we're kind of be kind of ready here for the next step in Relics of Epic Relics. I think that we yeah. need to see Epic Relics. The problem with seeing Epic Relics would then be that we would need to have higher levels above level 30 and I think that they would need to adjust the way their levels work. And my reasoning for that would be is because I think they would want to give you access to an epic relic maybe at, like, level 20-ish or so, right? Um, so I think they'd need to readjust levels at that point a little bit, but that would be a very cool thing. And I, I honestly think that with how small their team is, I wouldn't even be mad if there was, like, only four epic relics to start, right? Like, they, I'm okay with them starting small, but something like that would be a really cool addition to where it feels like more like okay it's not just the moment you get an, a rare slot it's just auto throw another rare one in there right like it's there's a little bit of a thing and it's like okay well maybe i actually like this rare power a little bit more for this champion than this epic power right and so there's all these different things that i think that we can kind of see is like one of the next steps i'd like to see star power fours as well at some point but i'd prefer to see relics first to be honest guys gave us not epic and all to level 35. Yeah. <laughs> throw throw Gale Force back in the gutter here. <laughs> it's too good. Yeah, I think we've covered a lot today. It's like fun. Yeah. If you're more of our two guests, check out their channels and just down below. And also, of course, the database you can find. Heroes invited of Fear of Hell. Our cute. And we hope that the updates. Yeah, that's still. Definitely hashtag. Very much alive. Very happy. We're still going strong. Thank you for watching. Honestly, it's better It's better than it ever has been. Honestly. I, I, I really it's getting better. That. Kind of like StarCraft. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, um, this the custom map editor. Can you imagine, like, like, can we imagine if we had a custom map editor? Like, we have, we have all this as a toolbox, then we can just make our own maps with like two powers and different counters. And imagine that we just play each other's map. That'd be yeah. I think that would be like very very long term stuff that I could see if they they really want to make this this mode that permanent. You know, like it, which I think that they do. I think that that'll be what really comes like long term. That'll be like okay, this is really where we're starting to kind of dig deep into this mode's permanent. We're adding these like permanent features because one of the things about our the community is there's definitely gonna be people that will take advantage of that and make these awesome runs that we can just see and. But I think that they just need to. There's we're, we kind of forget sometimes that we're still in the early stages of yeah. this mode, right? Like, I was gonna say, it, let's it just make it one May. step at a time. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it, it came out in May, which is a crazy thing to think about. That this this mode is about to be, you know, like what, like five months old. Like it's 
th- this is such a amazing start to a mode that's so young that like and we, you could see what Lab of Legends was able to become in like years, right? And mm-hmm. that was with way less experience that they had, and they have way more now for what they can do, and they've done a lot more within just two or within like what like four patches. So I think they've done a great job. I think that we just have to keep our expectations where it's like it's great to look forward to some of these things but when we think about how young the mode is we're going to see so much coming that it's just like we just kind of have to appreciate what keeps coming through because that's what's going to make the devs want to continue to to deliver right like and i think that that's where we're just i mean just kind of have to keep the mindset of like great it's great to look forward but also keep in mind that you know we're still still here in the present and the devs can't you know, it, that would be a huge undertaking for how small of a team that they have. And I think that we're going to be looking at a lot of awesome patches in the future here. And I'm sure that they're looking towards some of these these things like we are too, but it's just like those things take time for them to make, right? Just streaming. And this mode, even if it didn't get any more updates, it would still, like I spent 300 hours at least. Because it's just like so... So much already, yeah. Four different fights, and relics, and it's already great. And it's just... But, anyways, we're about to wrap it up. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching.